Hi, it's Adam the Hip Nerd, and today's show and tell is this 3D printed halftone image. And I'm going to show you how I made it. Before I get started, uh, I want to mention 3D printed lithophanes, which is another way to uh, print an image with your 3D printer. Uh, 3D printed lithophanes are, are pretty cool. Uh, they're not to my taste, and that is why I came up with this other method, um, I, and just because I could, and I thought it was interesting. Um, but they're cool technology. This is just another approach to making images with a 3D printer. So this is the plan. Start with a JPEG. Bring that into the photo editor of your choice. In my case, uh, I use the GIMP. Uh, from there, uh, I generate a image that is 32 by 32 pixels. And the reason why uh, it's so small uh, and this looks really tiny on your computer screen, but as you see with the uh, halftone at this size, you can see the image pretty clearly. Um, the reason for that is, uh, w which I will go into detail when I talk about my JavaScript program, uh, I had to t figure out the pixel size and whatever, and I came up with 32 by 32 pixels. So to keep things simple and not have to slice it up in the software, uh, I just scaled the image to 32 by 32 pixels uh, grayscale. And from there, I bring it into my JavaScript program. JavaScript. And the JavaScript program outputs an SVG file. And basically what it does is it takes uh, every pixel of the uh, input image and generates a square that is sized proportional to the brightness of that pixel and that's how I generate the image. I bring it into Blender, which is the 3D software of my choice. You can use other things, I imagine. In fact, uh, when I get to talking about some of the problems I ran into, um, I'll talk about some alternatives that might be used. Um, but I use Blender. And from Blender, I output an STL file for slicing and printing. And, and uh, that's the general process. For my uh, custom JavaScript, uh, I chose a JavaScript library, which I like very much, called P5JS. And I used an SVG library for P5JS. And the biggest consideration was trying to figure out um, what size to make everything. So I started with um, figuring out the printable area on my Prusa, which uh, I figured was about 220 Oops. 220 millimeters and just to give myself a little margin uh, I came I, I reduced that a little bit uh, just taking a guess uh, 
wasn't sure what size to make the pixels, um, but I just guessed at five millimeters. for the output uh, halftone pixel. And I uh, just divided it up and figured 32 by 32 pixels would be the way to go. So then I had to consider the screen pixel size. Uh, in the software, it's just designed to output to the screen pretty much and it's not intended necessarily for the use I'm putting it to. So um, I decided to make each pixel uh, one tenth of a millimeter. So I had to, if I was, if I needed to draw a five millimeter by five millimeter square, it would have to be 50 pixels by 50 pixels. And that's how I came up with the size uh, of the output. And then uh, I made in the in the software I made it output one of these uh, 50 by 50 pixel squares, so I'd have a full size square to use for scaling when I brought it into Blender, because Blender brings in SVG files very tiny. Um, I'm not sure what the scaling factor is. It's just kind of weird. It just brings it in very tiny. So uh, I have one full-size square in the top left corner that I measure and then figure out a scaling factor and I scale the whole thing up. The original plan was to take a plane and cut holes in it. The idea was to have uh, light shine from behind and the brighter pixels would be bigger holes and the darker pixels would be smaller holes. And I thought this would be a better demonstration of the 3D printed uh, technology. Um, but as you'll see, I ran into some problems. So starting off in Blender, delete the default scene change to an overhead view and then import the SVG file. The SVG file, as I said, comes in really small and there's a background. Just delete the background. Select everything and change it to a mesh. and then measure the reference square. Now this square is supposed to be five millimeters by five millimeters. Instead it's very tiny. So I use that number to calculate the scaling factor. I no longer need the reference square, so I delete it. Then I select everything and join it together to make one object. Then uh, in edit mode I perform a limited dissolve to remove the extra lines across the squares. I move the origin of the object to the center of the grid and then move everything to the origin of the XY plane. And then I apply that scaling factor that I calculated earlier. Now everything's the proper size. Now this step isn't absolutely necessary, but uh, the material that the object has uh, has no color. So in order to make things a little more visible, I just add a color 
to the material. Now in edit mode, I extrude everything up. Just a random height. Now I want my object to be three millimeters thick and just bigger than the grid itself. So I make this cube that's 210 by 210 by three millimeters and then center it on the z-axis uh, along the height of the grid. Now I'm going to use a boolean operator to punch holes in the cube. And this is where I discovered the problem. After I delete the grid, you'll see it didn't punch all the holes through. And in wireframe mode, it's a big mess. And originally, I tried to clean this up, uh, but it quickly turned into a nightmare. So I gave up on that. So the second plan was to generate the grid with all the holes already in it and bring that into Blender. The main change was to change from solid squares to outline squares by changing the stroke and the fill. I kept the mapping the same so the larger squares corresponded to the brighter pixels. And here's the problem. For some reason, it didn't finish. It got part way through and then stopped. And I know the problem is with the SVG library because when I change it back to a regular P5JS canvas, it finishes and does it properly. So um, from there, uh, I considered uh, taking the uh, uh, original output um, with the solid squares, bringing that into Inkscape, uh, and then manipulating it there to generate the uh, grid and bring that into Blender. Um, but that started to get more and more complicated, uh, and I came up with plan number three, which was to uh, print a white background uh, just uh, uh, switch to uh, black filament and print all the squares on the white background. So that was the simplest thing to do because I already figured out how to bring the SVG file in and extrude it. And I just took that and I just placed it in partially in the um, the background and that exported uh, very easily as an STL and sliced without a problem. So that's the route that I went with. Um, I did run into a little bit of a hiccup uh, changing colors. I decided to use the Prusa color print program that takes a G-code file and adds a stop uh, at the desired height it stops the printer, moves the head out of the way, beeps to let you know it's time to change the filament. And then you change the filament and you go back to printing. Um, but what I didn't notice, uh, it has a, a text enter box where you can put the height. I wanted the height to stop at 3.1 millimeters because my background was 3 millimeters uh, and um, I wanted to just get one layer um, just to be sure um, I wasn't going to mess anything up. So I wanted one layer of the squares printed out. So I entered 3.1, but when I clicked download, it changed the value to 3.05. So it stopped like it was supposed to and beeped, 
and I changed the filament to black. And that's why the output has this black corner here because uh, it started to do the outline and I thought that's kind of strange, that's not right. And then it started to fill in this corner and I said, oh no, that's, that's a problem. So I did manage to stop it after this little triangle and um, I decided it wasn't that bad. It actually kind of looks cool. Um, but that is not the intended result. Uh, so uh, in the future I'll know it only accepts certain values. Um, it would either take 3.05 or 3.2 and um, yeah you can change the value in color print with a plus and minus button and just use that to get to the height that you want. Um, so uh, after it started to print the wrong color, I stopped it, switched back to white, let it get to the first layer where it's doing the pixels, the squares, and I manually stopped it, switched the film in, and the result came out quite nice. So... That's it! I'm Adam the Hipner. Thanks for watching. Thank you.